Hello, and welcome to more LiDAR in Unreal. I'm Sean Foster, and in this video, we're going to go over a basic pre-visualization workflow. Then we're going to talk about some of the basic editing tools inside of Unreal. And finally, I'm going to introduce two free meshification tools and also some strategies that other people have come up with for taking LiDAR to the next level. First, LiDAR uses in virtual production. I'm going to talk about how I've been using it. So it's mainly been in a pre-visualization workflow, and I'll show some mocked up basics in a second. But for framing, shot timing, sequencing, edit decision lists, also metadata and burn-in, I think there's more opportunities in this area. I recently put out a video for burn-ins, and I'll put a link in, but I think a custom burn-in plus some of the metadata that we put out for this previs would be great. Also, recently it was used for a MoCo shot, for a motion controlled shot with a robotic camera head. It helped figure out how many sections of track we needed, where exactly we were gonna put the camera, and how much range of motion we had. And it saved money ahead of time, which was great. Finally, uh, it's already being used for a lot of background plates and I'll also show how I put it on a layer for level streaming. Um, finally, uh, I've got something in progress for where we will be able to use LiDAR for virtual scouting. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, here I am in Unreal and I've got the LiDAR scan selected. The first thing I wanna point out is in a previous video I went over using levels as layers and this is on a layer, which makes it really easy to turn on, turn off, freeze, lock. And that can make it really helpful for workflows. I used a lot of bookmarks as well, which will jump you between different points. We also used quite a few different motion captured like walk cycles at different speeds to help time out the pacing of the different shots, which was really great. Uh, the other thing here is I've got this old measurement tool. I used this in terms of measurement and color coded it according to RGB XYZ. So if, if you see green, that means that it's on the Y axis. And if it's red, it's on the X axis and blue is up and down as Unreal's conventions. The basic simple measurement tool allows you to drop in points and drag them out. The object based one which I used between the, the camera and the track. It allows you to specify the different actors. And then as the actors move, the only issue that I've run into recently was that you need to click refresh in order to update this information. But I think I can modify the blueprint in order to make it more dynamic, which would be more useful, especially if I streamed this information in to a custom burn-in. That could be a useful workflow, which I haven't tried out yet. Okay, well, basically that's the previs workflow. Let me open this up inside the editor and then we can go over some of the tools. All right, so here I'm in the editor. You can hit Control E or double click on the assets in order to open up the editor. The sometimes useful to hit Alt G to go into perspective mode, H and J to snap to different orthographic views. Now, if you want to edit this object, you can go into editing mode and it'll load in the entire asset, which is great, but it also means that you're loading in potentially millions of points, which is in this case, fine, but there is no method at the moment for unloading those points. So I'm saying yes. Then you can do things like there's different selection modes. So there's box, polygon, and also if you do box, you can do things like select a box and then also hold down the control key. There's some of the conventions. They're all just spelled out here. Now, if you do delete points, that will hide them by default, but you can permanently also delete points. So if you're clean, if you're doing a cleanup pass, those are the different options you have. Uh, I already talked about collision in a previous video. There's, you can unhide. You can also, one of the methods for modifying or dealing with point clouds is you might want to extract or separate your point cloud into multiple pieces. So there's that option. I spoke to some folks in the digital imaging remote sensing group last week 
and talk to them a little bit about alignment. Now there's a lot of alignment work being done using computer vision and also vector-based analysis in order to uh, help you align clouds. That's not really what Unreal is using it for. In fact, I found some documents that specifically said in Unreal that were like, no, 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 that's, we're not going in that direction. So that makes sense to me. I don't know exactly what the surface, like what this normal calculation is doing yet. And if you find out, uh, please post in the notes below. Otherwise I'll post an update as soon as I've got some information. Let's see, what else have we got? You can merge worked, I merged multiple point clouds and um, you can also align, you can align it to uh, other point clouds. It sort of aligns it right now. What I found was it was aligning it to the other point clouds um, origin point. Uh, and finally, go in 4.27. So under volumes, if you go into type LIDAR, you can, add a LiDAR clipping volume. And that can be another way of dealing with your volume. So you can, in this case, I'm going to just make it a lot smaller. So I'll make this 10. And you can see that as you reach the edge of that clipping volume, it allows you to just cleanly clip. And you can invert it too. Right now it's set to clip outside. All right. So those are some of the tools as I have used them so far and that workflow. So I'm gonna jump back to the PowerPoint. All right, I'm gonna wrap up by talking about tools for meshing your point clouds. Now this might be something that you're gonna to wanna to do, especially if you're scanning objects, but there's two free ones that are out there that are pretty popular, Mesh Lab and Cloud Compare. And the great thing about them is they've been around for well, at least Mesh Lab has been around for quite a while, and there's quite a few different videos that you can watch, including videos that are right in there when you download Mesh Lab on how to use it and how to meshify. Now, Cloud Compare is a little bit more new. There's a couple that I found that are commercial, and I'm curious to hear if anybody out there has been using those and how much more effective are they. Several of them, Geomagic is Specifically, it seems like it's positioned itself for reverse engineering, which is kind of interesting. And um, also the 3D scanning users group and also videos that I've been watching on different meshing strategies have had a lot of really nice advice on, you know, how do you massage the point clouds in a way that'll give you some of the best results? So these were some of the pieces of feedback that I found from these groups. Uh, there was also another interesting post just a week ago. Let me pull that up. It was on Twitter. It was a workflow that was being used for extracting uh, the edges in order to create so many blueprint like workflows. So I thought that was interesting and I wanted to share that. Let's Go back. And as I wrap up research that I'm heading towards. So thanks so much. I appreciate you watching. If you like the video, give it a like and also subscribe for more weekly Unreal content.